morning. I'm setting off from Montreal Belay and just gonna keep heading south. Continue my trip through France. I fancied a driving day today. Um, I do like driving over here, it's nice. And it's a nice sunny day. And I thought, yeah, I get some ground covered. So that's the plan. It's a camping car park place, so nice and simple. And it looks like there's some nice rides around there, maybe some hikes. I'm on a canal. Yeah, it looks like a good place to go. And I'm working my way south, so hopefully it's gonna be warmer. Home for tonight. That was a long drive, but I liked it. It was good. Looks like a nice place, right on the river here. On the way in, I saw some cliffs with um, houses in, and it looked like a staircase that went up the top. Fancy trying that. I'll have to see if you can walk up that. I think I might do that tomorrow. I've got a, a large-ish ride planned for the day after tomorrow. So tomorrow might be a bit of a walking day and just a looking around day. Good morning, another sunny day. I had a walk plan for today and a ride plan for tomorrow, but I decided to push it all back by a day because I fancy just having a quiet, slow day. And um, this looks like such a nice place as well. It's those cliffs, I wanna go and have a look at those. So yeah, it's just a day of no pressure. First job though, try and find somewhere where I can buy some food. Good enough, got everything I need and some ad blue. My van has started telling me I need to put some in. I don't know how I'm gonna get it in there though. I haven't got a funnel. I'll improvise. So just heading out now for a quick little five, six mile walk up these cliffs. I've got the drone with me. Thinking uh, I should be able to get some nice shots. This is such a beautiful little village. So there we have it. Nice walk, nice simple one, and a very interesting place. A UNESCO World Heritage Site. There's lots of cave paintings and things. Unfortunately, you can't get in and see them, which is a bit of a shame. But what can you do? It was still a nice walk, and I would recommend this town to anyone. Good morning. Today, just a short drive to a place called St. Leon sur Vizere for a walk, 12 mile walk. Should be good. I'm looking forward to it. The sun's going to be out, so I'm going to put my shorts on. I'm done with jeans and trousers. I'm committing. So, yeah, I'll see you when I get there. And a perfect parking spot for tonight. Depends if I move on, but maybe I'll stay here. I mean, this is perfect. And it's right on my walk. I'm gonna get my shorts on and get moving. Beautiful place, honestly, this whole region. Pasty legs, but it's so nice to get my shorts on. This is the best day of the year so far by far. It's nice and warm, sun shining, nice cool breeze as well. Absolutely perfect. Some of these places they seem to be everywhere. I mean, is someone living in that? I'm gonna guess Eric Cantona or that other famous French guy. You know the one, the actor, him. I just used Google Translate, which is incredible. And apparently, I've seen lots of these. I don't know if you can see it from here, the little squares in this cave. They used to breed pigeons. 
I think for food in the 11th century, unless Google Translate has it completely wrong. Look at this, it's this is Japanese knotweed. I used to work trying to get rid of it. We used to burn it and spray it and do all sorts of things that you wouldn't be allowed to do now. And there's no killing it. You have to dig up each individual root. But of course, there's thousands of roots in even a little patch. tracking this walk on my phone, my uh, watch I mean, as well as following a commute rap, map, because I'm curious to see how much further I walk while I'm going back and forth for these kind of shots. I'll let you know at the end. This is very cool, the Rock of St. Christopher. It's a network of caves and tunnels. The rock is one kilometre long and 80 metres high. And people lived there between 50,000 BC and the late 1500s where it was destroyed. It says in the wars of religion. So a troglodytic city. Very cool place. nearly at the van. What an epic walk. Then I need to decide whether I'm staying here tonight or I'm moving on to the next village where there's a nice long bike ride planned. I'll have a look when I get to the van and decide then what a day. So there we go. Hike done. 10.2 miles. It's a nice distance. Oh my watch. 10.9, so what's that? 0.7 of a mile. Sounds about right, doesn't it? Right, I'm gonna have this, and then I'm gonna figure out what I'm doing tonight. It's hard to leave this spot because it is so nice. But maybe there's a better one closer to the start of this next bike ride. First time filling up with LPG or GPL as it is here. I've no idea what to do, but I'm going to find out. I know I need this adapter, so wish me luck. Success. That wasn't that bad, the LPG thing. I've been worrying about that ever since I got here and putting it off. It's weird. I am a very anxious person. You might not think it, but I am. Every time I have to do something new, I always play out that scenario over and over and over again. And it always goes wrong. I think that is probably a good definition of anxiety. Anyway, I'm at my park up for tonight. I'm in Vezak. Vezak. And it looks good. I know you won't see it really, but there's a really nice looking chateau up there. And Ross has planned a ride for me tomorrow, so I'm pretty certain he'll have sent me up there. So I need a drink. I'm hot. It's actually hot. I've had the aircon on in the van. Very cool. Beautiful day. Bike ride day. Getting some snacks together. I've got flapjack, apple, orange, and I'm going to hard boil a couple of eggs in the air fryer. That should keep me going. I don't know if you've noticed, but I haven't actually been in one single cafe or restaurant since I've been out here. That's 10, 11 days. It's strange. I think it's because I'm not drinking coffee and I can't imagine going into a cafe and not having a coffee. So this getting off caffeine not only has given me more energy, but it saved me a lot of money as well. All packed up, ready to go. What a day. I've had to put sun cream on. First time. 
absolutely perfect and there's a nice cool breeze as well this is probably as good as it gets for riding conditions lucky me the dodong dodoing dodoing i think it's dodoing i don't know it could be uh, Loch Lomond all over again, couldn't it? This super cool chateau. I looked it up. Dordogne. I think I was right, but this is the Dordogne River. And that's why I'm in the Dordogne Valley. And I have to say, the Dordogne Valley is absolutely mesmerizing so beautiful even though i'm licensed and i do everything right you know I'm, I'm registered i've done everything i need to with the drone i feel like i'm doing something wrong when i use it i don't know why i suppose i'll get over it i usually try and find somewhere to hide away and do it though so no one can see me so and then i hate landing it when people are about so much so that i sometimes leave it up and just look around probably look suspicious energy that was a decent climb it's not over yet I've already figured out a couple of things with the bike I need a better climbing gear this is a red grade about nine percent and I can do it but there's no weight on this so yeah I think I need a, a better climbing gear and I think the thing to do is to put a smaller chain ring on the front I don't really know I'm no expert with anything but uh, I'm gonna do some research also the stem, I found my hand position is slightly higher and a little further towards me. So I think I need a shorter stem and possibly one of those ones that angle upwards. Um, my natural hand position always falls, not in the hoods, but just a little further back. And uh, I think that's, that's what I'm going to do. I mean, that's what this trip's all about, training and um, learning about the bike. But for the Trans Am, better climbing gear. I'm going to have a lot of weight on here. And there's going to be a lot of climbs like this. And they're likely going to be harder. Anyhow. Hmm. This region, I know I keep saying it, it's exceptional. Montford, what a beautiful village. I mean, they're just all so beautiful. This one's home to Chateau de Montford, which is an interesting place, built in the 12th century. And it was burned to the ground three times during the Hundred Years' War. Now, I didn't know what the Hundred Years' War was. I should. But it was a battle between the kingdoms of England and France during the late Middle Ages, between 1337 and 1453. So I guess they rounded the Hundred down, didn't they? So there you are, now you know. And so do I. Will I know tomorrow? Probably have forgotten. I give out these little tiny facts because that's probably about as much as I can remember.
Bonjour. I wonder why they do that. It's kind of putting all your eggs in one basket, isn't it? And I wonder where they go in. There's nothing over there that isn't over there. I don't know. So that's the end of the ride in Bainak a Kazakh. I think that's what it is. I think I'll get the drone up, show you that fortress, and that will be that. I'm going to go back to the van. I am hot. I don't think I'm burnt, but I might be. Awesome ride, epic place, fantastic country. So there you have it, Chateau de Bainak, another 12th century chateau. Apparently the best preserved in the region. Absolutely stunning place. I know I keep saying that, but I didn't know. I just read this was in French hands during the Hundred Years' War, but everything north of here was held by the English. So I think I'm going to do some research on the Hundred Years' War. I'm going to go back now. I'm going to have a beer and I'm going to have fish soup, I think, or maybe just cheese and biscuits. I don't know. I'm tired. That's worn me out. It wasn't that far, but I'm a bit out of shape. A lot out of shape. I know you have faith in me to get back into shape for the Trans Am. And I will. I forgot to mention. All told, the ride was 39 miles, so not that far. But, um, yeah, I felt it. Definitely felt it. This is some of the best cycling I've ever done. Now, I haven't done a lot. I know that. But of all the places I've been so far in France, this, the Dordogne region, is remarkable. See Bainac over there, look, still. Where am I pointing? Kind of there. Anyway. Yeah, beer. My poor old drone. I have to put him like this when I'm downloading. Otherwise, he makes this sound. I don't think that's right. It's been doing it for a while. But I've definitely anthropomorphized. Is that right? him, I think that means sort of imbued him with a life, because I feel guilty when I do this, because I think he's confused, he doesn't know what's going on, why he's tilted. Like a little bug. He may need some surgery. My first and only coffee of the day. I know it's a big one and it's a strong one, but yeah, it's the only one. It's funny how quickly caffeine gets out of your system. I don't even think about coffee. I really don't. I um, I don't crave it, even the first one in, in the morning either. It's just a routine. And like I said yesterday, I'm just not going into cafes and things like that. Um. I just don't see the point. I'd only go in a cafe for a coffee. Usually then I'd have some food just because I'm in there, whether I'm hungry or not. At least a cake or a pastry or something. So I'm saving a fortune. I haven't actually spent any money in cafes or restaurants. In fact, I was keeping a loose track of 
the finances on this trip and that the whole trip needs to be done on a budget just because it's so long and would be unsustainable and I think on average I'm spending about less than 25 euros a day in total including fuel everything less than 25 euros a day and I'm sure you know my regular viewers will know I'm not showing off flexing or whatever else but that last video the gdmbr full movie is doing so well and the watch time is really good on it and it's making more money than that so at the moment youtube is making more money than it is costing me to live and i can't quite get my head around that i don't know how that makes me feel I mean, I'm pleased, obviously. And there's two of us in this, obviously, Ross and I. So we, we just split all the money. That's the deal. He does 90% of the work. I do 10%. And we get 50-50 on the money. But it's clear that YouTube could be an income. I don't really know where I'm going with this. It just it, It's just amazing to me to think that you can just mess around filming videos and make money and and i'm making money on this trip <laughs> and i've got four thousand subscribers you know don't get me wrong i'm astonished i have four thousand subscribers but if you can make some sort of a small living with that many subscribers anyway i don't know why i chose now to talk about all that because i'm still half asleep i'm gonna finish this coffee it's a little bit rainy today, which is not a big deal because it's got sun as well. But I've got this list here, which is all potential places for me to go. All put together by Ross. Thank you again. And my next place on the list is Rockhamador. Rockhamador. It's not that far away. It's a clifftop village, World Heritage Site. So it sounds like it's just a, a place to have a look around. And it's only about an hour away, and I think that's as good a place as any. I don't mind having a quiet today. So I think I'm going to head there. But my next step then will be to look on one of these apps. The camping car one, maybe. This is the one. That, that's my default one. This is what this is now. I mean, it is like a very sanitised campsite, but it's got everything you need. And they're all the same. In You know, they function the same. The same services, and it all works. And I like it. So I'll probably have a look on there if there's nothing there. Or even if there is, I might have a look on Park for Night, another app with free park ups. I thought I'd give you a little insight as to how I make my choices for where to stay. But if you were ever to come out here, there's so many places. On that ride yesterday, I think I came across three of these camping car places. Probably four or five municipal airs, they call them, the free park ups for motorhomes. And they're just free on the edges of villages. So, you know, the idea you park up, you go in, you buy something in their shops or their restaurants. Yeah, there's no need to worry. You could just head off blindly and count on finding somewhere to park up for the night. So on Park for Night, Rock Amador, straight away you've got a parking lot that you don't have to pay for until the beginning of April, but it's got sanitary facilities a water point so you've got that or free and authorized places along the road at the bottom of the valley so i'm just going to head into rock amador probably look at well i'll go to that that proper one first if that's free i'll stay there and if it's not i'll go to and park on the road i mean the roads here it's not like busy france want motorhomes they like motorhomes they want tourists. I wish Britain was more like that. I honestly do. I know there's campsites in Britain, but these free airs and free park-ups. France has been a revelation to me. I mean, I can't believe I live so close to it. And I've been through France. I've never really explored it. But it's exceptional. It really is the history here. And I mean, we've got a lot of history in Britain. But... Um, particularly in this region anyway there's just so much to see now i've not really been visiting these places aside from riding through them but i've got plenty of time 
I'm, I'm coming back up, um, obviously, to get back home. And I might slow down even more and go into some of these places, these museums. All right, enough talking. I'm still on this. Good enough spot, five euros per night. Can't really argue with that. Quite an impressive place. Rock Amador. This uh, camping spot is just up the hill from the town, so I've got an incredible view down into the valley there. So I'm not doing a walk today, I'm gonna do it tomorrow. I love being able to just switch my schedule around so i think this is going to be the end of the video so i'll leave you with this view thanks for watching